And listen to everything. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's a fun question. Yeah, listen to everything. Okay, so I was asked a question about. Uh, yeah, we should be we should be on now. Yep, that might stop blinking at some point after we may go. Anyway. So <clears throat> you know, there's this. I, I call it like an appetite. There's like this appetite and this this. Um, an appetite to watch every film, read every book, listen to everything, maybe go go everywhere and visit every 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 location. And um, I think what I mean, I, I'm just sharing my own experience. Take what you want, leave the rest. But once I got aware of Hawkins' muscle testing uh, calibrations, that you can you can check the calibration based on, it's not really, it's not a judgmental system, it's a system based on certain things make you go very strong and certain things make you go more weaker. Like, you know, like if it was like you put rat poison, your arm would go weak. If you put an organic apple there, your arm would go strong. That's not a judgment, it's just your body relating to. Or if you say, I love everyone, your arm goes strong. And if you say, I want to kill everyone, your arm goes weak. So that's not a judgment, that is. So you're able to align. So when I saw that, and um, and I wanted enlightenment, then it becomes it becomes very very simple. Once I saw that, I was only in the beginning. I was only interested in books with the highest calibration. Um, Hawkins, uh, you know, he he was a, a, a you know he was in AA, and um, I went to the 12 step fellowships for, for the food addiction stuff. So I did that. I knew I needed to do that. I still do that. Uh, but then the Course in Miracles is at the level, the first level of enlightenment. And then his work goes on to explain the more advanced stuff. So it was quite. And that was basically by watching his stuff, I could see that was his threefold, as I took it, his threefold steps to enlightenment. 12 steps is like your O-levels in spirituality, A Course in Miracles is like your A-levels if you're in the UK, and his work will take you on to sort of degree level, PhD level type stuff. And I knew that was the path he took, and that was also going to be my path as well. I, t I took that path, and then, so I wasn't really, I wasn't really interested in anything else. I, t I took his advice, and, but later as I started to go into his work, um, you know, like the, the the music I listen to the most, even now for many years, is uh, Alleluia, Tobacco Bell's Canon, which uh, is a very, very high vibration. And I go, it's like, if I listen to that, that's a, you know, that's at a sublime level. And if I listen to the Beatles, it's going to be much lower. Uh, if I listen to the Rolling Stones, it's going to be even much lower. So I, and I want to be in, in an enlightened place all the time. So listening to something which is not matching my vibration uh, or the vibration I want to be at, for me, is that discord. Because once you reach those states of being, I'm not just using words, being in the observer, being in the timeless now, being in flow states, it's just words. But once you're there, like, there is a thing of like, if I'm doing anything which is going to be at a lower vibration or, dr or potentially drag me to a lower vibration, like I don't want to. You realize that that state in itself is everything. To be in the observer, you don't need anything else. Also, um, as you start, to, not in the beginning, in the early days, um, if, especially if you do the observer, so we're doing the observer later today. When you're in the observer, what happens is, and I think it's a great thing that's happened for me, which I'd like to share. The observer is, you know, there is no such thing as an inner and outer, but it's like an inner state, if anyone's been in the observer. It's not like being in your head trying to get experience from outside. So when I'm in my thinking, then it's like, well, I hope this is going to be an exciting day. I hope this is going to be an exciting person. I hope, like, if I go over to that place, it's going to be more exciting. Actually, the observer is the opposite of... Um, uh, the, you know, so for me, being in the observer is like going inward, away from my ego, detaching from my thoughts. And if I'm in my thoughts trying to get enjoyment out of an environment, then I want to go to the observing of something trying to get enjoyment. Does that make sense? So I'm going deeper in and detach, detach. I want to detach from um, going outwards. 
play. Okay, come on up. Just push the door, come on up to uh, number three. Okay, that's going to be a funny video, I don't mind. Um, and um, so, uh, so what I was saying, yeah, so it's like there's a happiness that's here now. If I, I go to the observer of the environment, I go to the observer of my thoughts, I go to the observer of anything that thinks this is an exciting or a bad event. So it's more like, and that observing is with me everywhere I go. So the idea that that location over there is better than this location, I'm dissolving that idea that that, because if I thought that, well, this location is not as good as that location, then I've got a dualistic split to so I go to the observer of that and more inward. So everywhere I go is, is where I am. Everywhere I go, that inner, that inner observing is with me, if that makes sense. So that's the thing. Once you get more mature with the observer, you know, it's not really about reading another book. It's not really about reading another book. So once you get more versed with being in the observer, or you're doing the Course in Miracles, you're getting to a place where you start to recognize a flow state or an observing state. And you're doing that just to maintain that observing flow state or that timeless place. So the, the words are just a little check-in just to be back in the observer or just to be back in the flow of the time, of the holy instant. That's all. You're not really reading it to analyze it, understand it. Just a little prompt. Does that make sense? Just to be back in stillness. Um, and, uh, but how but to get there more, because you're saying uh, it's when you're in the observer more, but what if you're in the observer less? If you're in the observer less, then, um, uh, then yes, I'd read stuff and listen to stuff and go to places with the highest vibrations. So I'd go to, I'd, I'd read The Course in Miracles, I'd read Hawkins, uh, I would, uh, thank you, I would, um, go to groups where they're talking with the highest, a bit curious here, oh, okay, so, okay, I'll go to groups where they are uh, of the highest vibration to get that alignment uh, until, until I get to the observer or read stuff or listen to people who help me, just have a, have a, have a seat, please, um, and um, just making a recording. Um, I, so I would, um, yeah, so if I'm not in the observer and I have an appetite, and this is contextual, I wouldn't take it, but if it was me, if I'm not in the observer state, I would try and do something that would give me the best chance of getting back into the observer state. So, okay, so if I go to a, for example, a Course in Miracles group, that's got a good chance of getting me to observe. If I listen to, say, Alleluia's Pachelbel, you know, which is a very serene, sort of enlightening music, that might get me in. If I listen to someone, you know, like Hawkins, that might get me in. If I'm not in the observer and I choose something less than the enlightened state, I could still choose something that makes me happy, for example, but not enlightened. I could read a book on love or something like that, or or whatever. So that would be, at least that wouldn't take me to the observer, but then I'd have a different intention. Like, I don't want to get to the observer, I just want to be happy. So that has a different vibratory thing. So for me, uh, uh, I would try and get into the observer by choosing those things. I'm not, you know, for me, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to tell anybody what to do with their lives or what they should choose. But for me, it's like being in the observer all the time is the most important thing. That doesn't mean I, you know, so if I, if I am going to places, like I, I go to 12-step groups, but then it's a great place to practice being in the observer, you know, or practice your Course in Miracles. So not really going there to, in, you know, like, some level of service, yes, but I'm not really going there to enjoy it. I'm going there to practice my spiritual stuff so I can be in the observer in those places. So there is no... I mean, I've never had a holiday thing, like, you know, I want to check out the Bahamas or anything. I just think that hasn't been in there for me from early childhood. But now it's like, but even now in the Observer, it's like, it, can I be in the Holy Instant here, or do I have to be in the Bahamas to go to the Holy Instant? You know, it's like, it's like, it doesn't, you know, or, 
can I be in the holy instant talking to you, or you're not the right person to be in the holy instant, I need to find another person who's better. So, um, so then if I'm going to be reading things and doing things and visiting places, it would be those which would help me align to the highest vibration the quickest, rather than those things which would not align. And I know that that's just me. I mean, there's nothing wrong with wanting to go to places and enjoying them. Here's the thing with wanting, if I'm going to read a book to be more intellectually intelligent around the subject, but I'm going to be in my head afterwards, for me that's not necessarily a spiritual, it might be a practical purpose. Like, 